right. Good morning or afternoon, everyone. We're going to be uh, jumping in and looking at how to choose barcode scanners for Business Central. We're going to go through a little bit of a PowerPoint here to talk about, you know, what you need to look for when you're looking at barcode scanners for, for use with Business Central or, or really for anything. And the reason we're doing this is we get a lot of questions on a regular basis about what scanner should I buy and, you know, what are the pros and cons and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and kind of look at what are the things that you need to consider when you're looking at these devices. And then we're actually gonna have, you know, sort of a live look at the devices. Uh, you know, we're gonna have a, well, we've got a camera set up here and I'll walk you through what some of these devices look like so you can get sort of a, you know, a little look at, at what they look like and how they work. And then we'll talk about the pricing and recommendations and things like that. All right, now with that, a uh, quick note, you know, quite often we'll send people to a, a website that's actually a DMS iTech website. So DMS iTech is a sister company of InsightWorks, and they focus on, on hardware and managed service providers, stuff, and things like that. So, you know, if you're looking for devices, you'll end up going to a DMS iTech uh, shop, and that is related to InsightWorks. So if we send you there, that's still us that you're dealing with. It's just sort of a, a sister company. I just wanted to make sure you guys understood that. Now, you know who InsightWorks uh, is, you know who we are because you were on the site and signed up for this webinar, but we have been around for, you know, about 10 years now. And, you know, we focus on the distribution side of things with a number of solutions in the uh, manufacturing and distribution space. When we're talking about the scanners we're, we're dealing with today, those are typically used for Warehouse Insight or WMS Express. So both of these are available for Business Central or NAV, and this is what's going to actually be running on those scanners. Now, if you have some other system that you're connecting up to Business Central or whatever, great, These this discussion is still good, but if you're actually looking for software to connect to Business Central and do all the barcoding and everything else, it's one of these guys that you'd wanna look at. I'll, I'll give you links at the end, but there's uh, webinars and things like that and videos we have online for the software. We're not really gonna cover off the software today. And we also have a bunch of other solutions you can go to our website uh, to check out information on. Okay, but what we're gonna be focusing on today is really the hardware. And you know, somebody buys a, a warehouse management solution, right? So you buy the software to connect to Business Central, right? Business Central doesn't have anything built in. If you want it, you go and grab WMS Express and it's free and you plug it in and away you go. That is available for Business Central Cloud. If you need NAV, uh, software for NAV or software for Business Central on-premises, you'd look at Warehouse Insight, okay? Now, um, what we're looking at, there's really three questions. There's almost always just three questions we ask when people are asking us about what hardware to use. And those are the first three on the, on the screen there. How rugged do you need those devices, right? Do they need to, do you need to be able to drop them from 10 feet or is four feet okay? Uh, those types of things. And that really, that, that drop spec is really the, the big one, right? You know, everything else sort of derives from that to a large extent. You know, in a typical warehouse environment, it's how much can you drop this thing is, is really what determines how rugged it is. But there is IP rating. So, you know, ingress for dust and, uh, and moisture. Uh, you know, sometimes that, that's sort of correlated with the drop spec. The more rugged it is for, for dropping, the better IP rating, but that's not always the case. You know, if you're using a phone style device, you know, phone style scanner, um, quite often those are used out in the field and for deliveries, right? If you're using Warehouse Insight for proof of delivery or something like that, those drivers might drop those things in puddles or they might have to work in more harsh environments. So sometimes the IP rating is, is independent. And finally, the temperature. Most of the devices we're covering off today work down to, you know, about minus 20 Celsius, like minus four Fahrenheit. And, uh, you know, if you're colder than that for a period of time, they should be okay. You know, if you're working in, in minus 30, you know, for eight hours straight, they may not, not perform so well, but definitely minus 20, all of these devices for the most part will work. And the other thing that we look at is the scan range. And by that, you know, when we say, what do you want a long range device or a standard range device? That's not how far you are away from your Wi-Fi access point. That's how far away you are from the barcode, right? So a standard range, which is, which is fairly typical, you know, if you've ever used a barcode scanner, you know, in a grocery store or something like that, that's standard range. You, you have to be kind of within, you know, six inches uh, to, you know, 30 inches of, of or maybe not 30, 24 inches of that, uh, that particular barcode, right? So, um, you know, and 
that's basically the standard range. So you need to be close to the barcode to scan it. Then there's also mid and flex range, you know, depending on the device that could extend that out to maybe three feet of scan distance, so a meter of scan distance, or up to, you know, five meters or 15 feet of scan distance, depending on the barcode. So the range is also barcode dependent, right? Because then you get into the long range and the long range, uh, anywhere from 30 to 70 feet based on the device. So that's the device spec. It'll say, oh, I can scan up to 70 feet. But yeah, if you've got a you know, half inch square barcode, you're not gonna get that from 70 feet away. That needs to be a couple inches square to, to get that if you're on data matrix barcodes. If you're on the linear barcodes, which are you know sort of the standard 1D barcodes, those are gonna have to be pretty huge to hit them from you know, 50 feet away, okay? But those, the scan range is the other one. And, and the long range is important because if I need to scan stuff like pallet labels up on the top shelf, or if I'm in a forklift and I wanna scan the pallet without getting out of the forklift, you might wanna look at the long range uh, devices. And finally, the camera. Um, so a lot of the devices just have a camera by default, but some it's an option and it can add a few hundred dollars to the cost of the device in some cases. And where you would use the camera is Typically, it's shipping and receiving, where if I receive something and it's damaged, I can take photos photos of it right there with the device, and it'll automatically upload into Business Central or, or NAV, you know, if you're using our software, that is. And similarly, at shipping, you can take, you know, photos of pallets and things like that before they leave. So that's another option. So those really are the three that we mostly care about. Some of the decisions on this will drive the form factor. Like, do you have a physical keypad on the device or is it just one big touchscreen device? Or there was a question in the sign up, is it wearable, right? What about a wearable device that you can wear on your wrist and things like that? But if you want something really rugged, you may be stuck with the physical keypad and those sorts of things. Or if you decide I want a device that doesn't have a physical keypad, you're not gonna be getting the most rugged device. And then finally the price, you know, some people come in and say, I wanna spend as little as possible. And of course that's going to limit you know, some of the things that you can choose up at the top here. Or, you know, if I choose the most rugged and most powerful device, that's obviously gonna drive the price up. Okay, so those those first three are really the three things that we ask. Once we have those answers, we can give you some selections. Now, there are a bunch of other things to consider. One of them was uh, um, operating system. Um, and what we're talking about today is, is Android for the most part. So everything that we're dealing with today is Android. You can still buy Windows devices, right? They're Windows Embedded Compact 7 is, is the current version. There's really no valid reason to buy those unless you want to maintain a fleet of devices you already have. So if you have a bunch of Windows devices already and you want to stick with that so that you're using the same accessories and all that kind of stuff, great. Windows devices are available. But for anything new, we're talking about Android, right? So Android, all the manufacturers are, are building Android devices and that's where they're putting the effort and that's what you're gonna end up buying if you buy a scanner device. All right, now some secondary factors other than OS, um, linear versus 2D. Everything that we do is, is 2D and that's scanning the square data matrix barcodes. I'll show you what those look like if you haven't seen them. But we do get questions about the linear stuff because you know, you have barcodes that are very close together and things like that. I'll show you how that works actually when we get into the video here. Um, does it need mobile data? Are you doing proof of delivery? Do you work out in a yard where you don't have Wi-Fi access? That kind of stuff. Like, do you need to be able to run a SIM card in those devices? That's also a, a decision you might need to make. And what kind of accessories does it provide? You know, does it have a pistol grip? Can you get a holster for it? Those types of things. Memory and storage are, are not really a big deal. Even the, the most basic devices, the cheapest devices have plenty of memory, plenty of CPU, plenty of storage for sort of these dedicated applications in, in the warehouse or the field or whatever. Uh, another thing you need to keep in mind is when you buy these devices, you know, most of them have separate charge docks or charging stations, right? Especially when we're talking about the, the dedicated warehouse style devices, you're gonna have to look at how many charge docks you need and that sort of thing. And that does factor into the price, right? So when we look at some of these rugged devices, they'll have a, a, a four slot option where you buy the charger that can hold four devices simultaneously. So you have these banks of chargers out there. Well, obviously that's gonna add to the cost of the device versus something that's more of a you know phone style device, which can just charge over USB, that type of thing. And then finally, the manufacturer sometimes comes into play. Like there are people, hey, they're a Zebra shop, right? They run Zebra devices, they wanna stay with Zebra, 
or they want to stay with Honeywell or whatever it happens to be. And so they're going to make their decision based on the manufacturer. And on that note, the ones we typically deal with are sort of the big three. There's, there's a million manufacturers of devices out there now because it's all Android and anybody can build an Android device. But the big guys are Zebra, who used to be Motorola and, and Symbol before that. But Zebra, Datalogic, and Honeywell. Those are the guys that we deal with. Okay, those are the, the primary guys. So within that, these are the models that, that we typically recommend out of, you know, out of those three manufacturers, there's about a hundred different models. And if you get into Zebra, you know, this one MC9300, you can, you know, they've got a hundred different versions of that particular model. But out of all those models, these are generally the ones that we recommend. The CK65 is a Honeywell device. And it's pretty much the most rugged out of all of these. It's got a 10 foot drop spec. So, I mean, you can drop it off the top of a forklift and in theory it'll survive. It does come in either a standard range or a long range scanner, and you can get it with a, a camera and it has that physical keypad. This also has uh, an IP68 rating, I think. So you could go swimming with it if you want. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's the most rugged, you know, out of this, this list for sure. The Motorola MC9300, is sort of the similar specs for, for ruggedness, uh, but it's it's significantly higher price, so we prefer the CK65. And then the Datalogic Scorpio X5 is a is a really nice tool. And I'll show I'm gonna show you both of these in a sec. It's got a it's not quite as rugged. It does have you know the sort of the standard and long range as well, and it does come with the camera. The MC3300 is a zebra device, you know, a slightly less drop spec, really nice screen on these guys. I'll show you that in a sec. It also has the best long range scanner out of all of these guys. So if long range scanning is your primary decision factor, the, the zebra right now has the best long range scanner. Uh, that one's got a 70 foot range and I can regularly, on a, on a two inch square barcode, I can regularly hit that barcode from 60, 70 feet away. It's, it's pretty impressive. Anyway, and then these guys down here, these ones don't have the, the physical keypad. Well, the memory key kind of has a little one, but this is more the phone style device that you might use in a warehouse or you might use out in the field or proof of delivery, like delivery drivers, that type of thing. And, you know, you kind of get that trade off. They're not quite as rugged. They're four foot without a, a rubber boot or five foot width. The Honeywell, again, sort of maxes out the um, the ruggedness. It's the most rugged out of all of them. And you can see when you, if you actually felt it, it's a, it's a heavier, more solid device. But these guys here, if you don't want that that physical keypad. All right. So with that, that was a lot of boring blah, blah, blah. Let's look at what these devices actually look like. So I'm just going to sh show these things here. And what you see here uh, on the uh, screen, this is my webcam. Hopefully there's not too much lag. I'm going to move slowly to sort of show this. What you see all, off on the side here are the screens from these various devices. And uh, you know I'll I'll bring them up and, and show you. So what you see here, this is the CK65 device that I mentioned, which is you know the most rugged device you can get uh, out of that that list. Um, so this guy is um, you know the the sort of big daddy, the the most expensive for the most part out of that list, but it's the one that we reckon, recommend most often. But it's a pretty typical warehouse style device. This one's got that optional pistol grip on it. You know, it's got the physical keypad. And by the way, this is an alphanumeric keypad. There's a lot of different options for keypads here. A good one is instead of having the, the alphanumeric stuff down here, is instead you have um, function keys like the F keys. So you'll notice, I can maybe try and zoom in a little here. The F keys on this, they're all sort of in yellow and in green. It's hard to see there, but I have to hit the little yellow button to get at these F keys. And the reason you'd want that is because, you know, uh, you don't necessarily want to be touching the screen all the time, right? So if you have gloves on and things like that, you might not want to touch the screen. And if you have those F keys, you can just hit an F key to execute an action and things like that. So sometimes those numeric keypads are they're either functional numeric or just uh, numeric keypads. Um, you know, without the the, the alpha uh, keys here might be better suited for you. And of course, when you're in, you know, let me actually switch to one where I've, I've got, uh, got it shared on the screen. So I'm going to switch to this uh, Scorpio X5 here, right? So this guy here, 
And, uh, you know, same thing. This is the uh, the data logic, not quite as rugged. Looks nice, though. It's a nice looking unit. Decent screen, nice keypad, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, it does come with a pistol grip and, and a camera and everything else. But what I was going to talk about was, you know, that physical keypad, right? If you don't get the alpha keypad, what you're able to do is just launch the um, the uh, virtual keyboard in, in Android. So let me just start this guy up here. There's one minor thing I don't like about the, the Scorpio X5 is uh, you, you're going to have to touch the screen like the old resistive uh, key, uh, old resistive screens to get it to to accept your tap, which is good and bad. You know, you don't you won't accidentally, you know, tap something or, or whatever and uh, and start something. You actually have to really grab the screen. But anyway, what I was going to talk about was, you know, on here, you know, let's say I'm looking for a specific description or something like that, or I'm typing something in and I need to use the alpha keys. Well, I've got those alpha keys down at the bottom here. I can just type in without having to launch the on-screen keyboard. But if you don't have that alpha keyboard up here on, on the scanner and you have the function keys, of course, you can just come in and on Android, I can just enable that, that virtual keyboard. And now I've got my virtual keyboard. I can type away on when I need it. And when I don't need it, because all I'm doing is um, doing numeric entry, then I've got the full screen here, right? And what that saves you from having to do is, um, you know, again, touch the menu and things like that when you can just use function keys to do it, right? Now, while I'm here, let's talk a little bit about the, the barcode scanning. So, you know, I mentioned uh, the, the data matrix barcodes. And that's what you see here. These are these square barcodes that you see on, on this page. And by the way, this page was generated from our, our barcode generator tool that you can get for free in Business Central. So if you want to build a, a sheet of barcodes to test with or, or for whatever reason, you can use that and you can build your own reports in Business Central with it and that sort of thing. I will use this guy here. So this is the CT60 uh, device. So let me move these things out of the way. This is uh, fun. So this guy here doesn't have that numeric keypad. This is one, if you're interested in wearables, what a lot of the companies are doing is instead of building a dedicated wearable device like Zebra used to have, they sell a wrist mount for this style of device. So what you would do is you have a wrist mount, you put it on there, and that's how you wear it. And then you have a Bluetooth ring scanner or a USB ring scanner, and that's how you use a wearable device, right? So they do that. Now, um, what I was going to do is actually come in here and do some barcode scanning, and hopefully this guy, uh, the scanner, actually reacts appropriately. Yeah, this one is good. So we come in here, and I can come in and you know just scan, and it's as simple as that, right? Instead of using a phone-style device, and there was a question, you know, what about using phones? Well, here I've I've actually got the camera set up on this thing, so I can actually use the camera to scan. And it's just nowhere near as good, right? To scan it with the camera, I got to do that. It takes a second and it's it's no fun, right? So you want that, that scanner style device. You don't want to use a phone because I can come in here and it's just beep and it's done and I've scanned that barcode, okay? Now, the nice thing about these data matrix codes is, again, if you make these bigger, if this thing is, you know, an inch and a half or two inches square, I can hit that from, you know, 30 to 70 feet away with the right scanner okay all right now another question that we have uh on this is is again that that linear versus um the um uh the 2d barcode scanning so the linear of course are, are this style of barcode and quite often you know for that style of barcode you use a scanner i'm just using a little uh you know, handheld guy, just to show you the laser, right? And that's easy to scan. And the reason people want that sometimes is because you get packaging like this, right? If I'm using a 2D barcode scanner on this, that makes it very difficult to choose the right barcode to scan. So I just restarted my data logic so the, the scanner actually works. So I'll give you an example on this. I'm going to start up on this guy. I'm just going to start the, uh, the demo app. So if I come in here and I want to scan one of these barcodes on here, I just, you know, scan. Well, what the heck barcode did I just scan? Out of those three, which one did it actually pick up, right? We don't know because you can't really choose. So people think, oh, well, in a case like that, I can't use a 2D scanner. And if you don't buy a 2D scanner, then, you, then you're not future-proof. You can't scan these 
you know, data matrix barcodes. So you want to buy that 2D scanner, right? That That is something that, that you do want. And the way you address barcodes like this is every, um, every manufacturer does have some capability for doing this. On the data logic, I'm just going to go in here. It's hard to see. Sorry, the screen share tool of, uh, killed my, my scanner, so I had to kill it. But if I come in here and I go into scanner options, all of these things will have the ability to set things like, you know, aiming or pick list and all that. So if you enable that setting, what it allows you to do, and by the way, it, here's a tip, I, uh, I forget not everybody uses Android. So if you are on these devices, the square button is kind of your recently used apps. And if you double tap that, it'll just flip between the last app and, you know, the last two most recently used apps. So that's kind of handy, um, you know, just as a, a side tip for, for Android. Uh, stuff in general. Um, now, anyway, what I did there was I turned on that option, and now you can see, well, it's kind of hard to see on there, but I can actually aim that device and choose which barcode I'm scanning. Okay, so there's lots of options like that on these devices. Another question I had uh, on the thing was uh, a little bit about accessibility, right? What do you have if you have people that are, are vision impaired or whatever? And yeah, because it's Android, it has all of those sort of uh, accessibility things available to you. You can just set it up in standard Android and you've got all that accessibility stuff available to you. All right, now uh, let's see what else we got here. One thing I will talk about too is we talked about that um, uh, long range scanning. So when we scan those long range barcodes, right, we want them to be larger. Uh, to, to get. Well, those long range scanners can also scan uh, short range as well, right? They can scan, you know, close to, to where you are. The problem is some of the devices take a little longer to do that scan. So as an example here, when I do this, you'll see it's got this big thing and it's actually focusing. It's kind of hard to see on the, on the webcam there, but it's focusing. So when I go to scan this device, it takes a second to focus before it goes beep right? It's not a huge deal most of the time, but if you change, you know, the position, it might take you a second to scan that versus, you know, if I grab, you know, this guy here, it doesn't matter, you know, what distance I'm at, I can just go beep and it'll scan it, you know, instantly, right? Except I had the setting on to aim. So the long range stuff um, definitely can take a little longer to focus in some cases, right? It took a second there to focus. The exception to that are, are the zebra ones, right? The zebra guys are um, uh, very good at the long range scanning. So here with the zebra, you can see it's pretty much instant. If I change, you know, position on it, it still grabs it. And this guy will also, again, scan that from, you know, 70 feet away, right? And my webcam, oh, that's probably because this piece of paper is behind here. Webcam has gone out of focus. All right, so that's a little bit on the devices. Now, uh, those are the, the sort of rugged devices, right? The, the MC33, the uh, CK65, and the Scorpio X5. So those are kind of the three you know, standard style devices with the keypad that we'd recommend. If you want rugged, uh, the Honeywell is, is the way to go. In between is the, the data logic, right? It's, it's pretty good. And if you want long range scanning, like really good long range scanning, the Zebra is pretty good. Um, but the best value is, is either the data logic or the Honeywell in this particular case. Okay, so those are those three guys there. Now, the other ones that, that we've got, um, again, you looked at the, the CK, or sorry, the CT60. So this is the guy that doesn't have the, the physical keypad. And there's pros and cons to that, right? So if you're a delivery driver or something like that and you want to use it, you would, you know, probably prefer a device like this. These do take SIM cards. So, uh, you know, you can um, you can use it with a, a you know, a cell plan and, and use it as a phone and everything else as well and get your mobile data. And again, without that physical keypad, you've always got the virtual keyboard popping up when you're doing data entry and those sorts of things. So for warehouse use, it's not as nice because you're going to scan something and it's going to pop up this keyboard to do your numeric entry, right? So if you're in a warehouse, the ones with the physical keypads are better. If you're out, uh, you know, this style of device is nice. Now, an in-between option for that is this little Memor K guy. 
And this guy here, sorry, I know these windows are getting confusing. Uh, this little Memoir K guy here, it's kind of a hybrid, right? It's mostly touch screen, but it's got this teeny tiny little numeric keypad at the bottom. And if you're doing numeric entry, this is actually pretty nice. All right, so there's lots of good reasons to, to get the Memoir K. It's also the cheapest device. It's under 600 bucks on this one. And, uh, you know, it's nice and small. You can fit it in a smock pocket or just a, a shirt pocket or whatever, which is good and bad. It's easy to move around, but, you know, people accidentally take it home or on purpose take it home or, or whatever. This one also doesn't take a SIM card, um, you know, so it's really just uh, Wi-Fi usage usage only. But the nice thing is, again, it, it has that... Uh, uh, numeric keypad at the bottom. So if you're doing numeric entry, right, I'll just open up uh, an inventory account here and it's got these little arrow keys. So I can just arrow down to choose what I want, hit enter. So I'm not touching the screen at all for this stuff. And when I do my numeric entry, it doesn't actually pop up, you know, as you can see here, it doesn't actually pop up that virtual keyboard for me to do entry. I can do it all here on the device, nice and easy. So that's actually a nice little unit, especially for the price. Now, one step up from that is, um, you know, this is sort of the same class. This is a, uh, a Memoir 20, but a Memoir 10 and Memoir 20 are kind of the same. Uh, Memoir 10 is a, is a little smaller than this. Um, but the nice thing about these guys is uh, they do take SIM cards. You know, they're nice and rugged. They've got lots of accessories. They've got lots of good options too, by the way, like hot swap batteries. All of these devices, you can swap the batteries out and things like this. If I go to swap the battery, I can swap it without shutting the, the machine down or anything like that. So this guy here, um, again, these come with, with uh, or you can get wrist straps if you want to make them wearable. The, the Memoir 10 is a little small for that. But it, you can use this for, you know, outside work, you know, if you're a delivery driver or whatever. It's a nice phone device, um, great scanning, all that kind of stuff. But if you do want to use it in a warehouse, it does also have the ability to, you know, use a pistol grip. So these have a little pistol grip attachment. You can just come in, both of them are 10 and 20, cl click it on, and you've now got, you know, my warehouse scanning device, and I'm good to go. You know, it still doesn't have that physical keyboard at the bottom, but you've got a lot of screen real estate, so you're not going to lose much when that virtual keyboard pops up. Okay, so those are some of the devices. We've got, you know, something like the CT60, very rugged, nice device. Um, you know, uh, takes SIM card, all that kind of stuff. The Memoir K, nice cheap device. And I shouldn't say cheap like that. It's a very nicely priced device uh, for, for what you get out of it. It's nice and snappy, fast, and it's got this little numeric keyboard. And then you've got things like the Memoir 20, you know, full screen, but you can get with pistol grip and the Memoir 10 does, does the same thing. So those are kind of the, the different classes of devices, right? So we've got, you know, the sort of the full screen guys up at the top and sort of the rugged, uh, devices down below. All right, we're back. All right, so now, you know, I showed you all the devices. That's how you use them physically and blah, blah, blah. Um, if you need to manage these devices, so people often ask about this as well. What, what kind of tools do you have for device management on these units? And um, a lot of people will will look at third-party MDM solutions. So MDM is <clears throat> mobile data or mobile device management, sorry, solutions uh, for managing the device. And what those things will do is it'll let you sort of configure the devices remotely, track them remotely, disable them, all of that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and there's lots out there, like Microsoft has Intune, SOTI is a big one, uh, 42 Gears is something that um, uh, Data Logic uses. But what we find is most people don't bother with it. And the reason for that is um, if you're running Warehouse Insight, it's often not a requirement. If you buy the devices from us, they come pre-configured, pre-loaded, so there's no management required there. And if there's updates, you can have the system automatically load the latest app into, into uh, the device and all that kind of stuff. And then there's things if you just want to be able to do what I did where I'm sharing the screen of the device you know on a on a PC there's tools if you check our knowledge base there's free tools you can get for doing that so a lot of those functions that the mobile device management provides you don't really need to worry about uh, if you have a large fleet of devices though that is something that you can look at now another thing that um, people ask about is how do I lock down the device 
right? Because these guys are, are Android and you can get them with all the Google Play, like the Google services on them, or you can get them without Google services. But most of them are coming with Google uh, services built in. And so what that means is you've got um, the Google Play Store on the devices. And that's not necessarily something you want because you don't want people going out there and installing you know, whatever apps they want on the device or you don't want them browsing to websites, you don't want them on, those sorts of things. So how do you disable that? There's lots of applications available on Google Play Store for locking things down. One of the nice things that I, I do like about the data logic stuff is it does come with a bunch of those things pre-installed and pre-licensed. If you go to Google Play, there's a bunch of free apps and there's some you have to license, they're like a couple bucks a month or whatever it happens to be to lock it down or, or free versions. And um, you can use those to actually lock the devices down. Now I'm just gonna, um, actually I've got one of these guys going. I was bringing up my Scorpio X5, but it doesn't wanna connect. Let's bring up um, my memoir guy here. So let me show you a little bit on that. Now again, um, all of the devices have some level of device management built in when you get them from the manufacturer. I'm gonna show you what's, what's kind of there for from a data, data logic perspective. So with data logic, the nice thing is it comes with um, the, uh, the Sherlock stuff. So it's got Sherlock and Surefox. You can get these for any device just off the Google Play Store and, and everything else. But Sherlock, what that allows you to do is just specify the only apps that are allowed to run on the device. And there is a free version of that you can get for Honeywell or whatever you want. And you can say they're only allowed to launch Warehouse Insight or they're only allowed to launch Teams and Warehouse Insight or whatever you like. And you can lock it down. And then Surefox, if you do want them to be able to go on, out and use a web browser, this restricts which sites they can get to. Okay, so that is really the extent typically of the device management that people uh, bother with. But if you want to go with SOTI or something like that, like a big warehouse manager or a mobile uh, device management solution, we can potentially help you with that, or you can just go out and, and grab it yourself. All right. Now, uh, let's see here. Close some of these things down so I'm not confusing myself. Now, the software side of things, this is all Android devices. And Android is, is you know, there's security updates and all those sorts of things that come up periodically. So the manufacturers of all these do provide updates and most of them, you know, somewhat device dependent as well, but most of them will provide updates for anywhere from three to five years on, on those devices. The issue is currently most of them, in order to get those Android updates directly from the manufacturer, you need a service plan. And that service plan is basically like an extended warranty. So depending on the manufacturer, there's different versions. One, you can just get a subscription to get you the updates. Another one is you just buy your, your comprehensive plan. And that comprehensive plan is really an extended warranty. What it does is get you access to all the Android updates and everything else if you need them. And it also gives you coverage if anything breaks, right? So I drop the device in a toilet, I can send it back to Honeywell and they'll send me a new one or they'll, they'll fix the one I did. Or I've seen people run things over with forklifts and they send them in and they get a new one, right? It's, it's pretty nice. That, that is really actually quite nice when somebody phones up and, and says, hey, I need to buy a new device because you know, this guy dropped it. And we say, hey, you know what? You got the, you got the service plan on that. It's, you get a free replacement and bang, they get, they get something directly from Honeywell or whatever. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. You know, with the old Windows stuff, you never needed to do updates or anything like that. With Android, there are updates coming out periodically that you probably want to do, probably want to keep up with. So you may want to consider a service plan. The cost there, like it says at the at the bottom, you know, adds anywhere from you know whatever 150 to 300 bucks per device, depending on the unit, uh, to get you that coverage, right? And that's the comprehensive coverage. All right. One last quick thing here on. Uh, on hardware is printers because I mean scanners are great but you're you likely also need printers. Uh, we can supply the printers as well. There's nothing special with what we do with them other than you know we can help support them but quite often having local support for printers is nice but we can supply any of these printers and when you're looking at printers we really only ask two questions. Do you want a desktop printer or do you want a rugged printer? A right, desktop it's a you know typically a plastic case you know if it if it gets 
smacked with an elbow too hard, you might put a crack in it. Well, it's a little more rugged than that. But anyway, they're, you know, they're desktop. They're meant for running in somebody's office or, you know, protected out on a packaging station or something like that. Rugged is, is going to be, you know, some of them still have plastic cases, but uh, most of them have metal cases. They're a lot more rugged. You can smack them with a forklift and they'll probably survive. And and they're significantly higher in cost, right? A desktop you can get for five, six hundred bucks. A rugged, they're they're starting at thirteen hundred to four thousand, depending on what you need. And then there's some other things, right? How the volume of labels you're printing, you know, the type of label. Uh, you know, mostly what we work with is thermal transfer, where you need a ribbon and a label, and those are essentially permanent labels. The uh, direct thermal is more like a receipt label, right? Like if it gets too much heat, too much sunlight, it's going to fade or, or darken or whatever. Anyway, printers, it's really, do you want simple or do you want a rugged thing? And that's kind of the decision and that drives the price. All right. So speaking of pricing, if you need any of the prices, you can go out to, um, you know, a device comparison site uh, on, our, on our website and it'll break it down. I'll show you that one in a sec. Or you can go to that shop.dmsitech.com. If you have a, a lot of units that you're looking at, um, contact us. Like usually there's a price break after a certain volume of devices. Or if you have questions like, you know, how many charges do I need? What accessories do I need? All of those sorts of things, we can typically help you out with that as well. So if we go out and actually look at, at the sites that I have listed here. So this is the device comparison site. Down here, it gives you a sort of a breakdown of some of the ones I showed. I didn't show you the MC9300. That's sort of a, a high-end unit that's, you know, from a specification point of view, very similar to the CK65. But if you're into the, the Zebra stuff and you want to stay with it, that's a, a very good unit. Uh, but here's a, an example of some of the prices. Now, this 659 for the MemoirK, that's a kit with a charger and everything else. But they do also charge over USB. So if you just need the device, it's, I think, 100 bucks less or something like that. This guy here, this is for the kit with the charger, uh, the charge dock and all that kind of stuff, but you can also get a USB cable for it as well if you like, and so on and so forth. If you want to look at all the, you know, this kind of breaks out the specs a little bit and everything else, and if you scroll down to the bottom, it'll break out some of the options for those units, right? So the basic one and the long range with the camera and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's one place you can go to get all that information. The other one is, again, if you go to that shop.dmsitech.com, come in, and if you scroll down to the bottom, there's this bundles, and then that'll allow you to, you know, do a search for, um, you know, a wider selection of, of devices and, and pricing, all right? So to summarize on, on the pricing, you know, the, the rugged devices are roughly, you know, 1,200 and up. You know, a typical and average is maybe about 1600 for a rugged device like a CK65. But you can see you can get these Scorpio guys here for, you know, 1200 or, or so. Um, if you're looking for the, you know, sort of phone style devices, they range anywhere from about, uh, it's just under 600 bucks for the Memor K up to 1000 bucks for the, the Memor 10 and 2000 for the Memor 20. And uh, I think it's around, 1200 or so for the CT60. So that's kind of the price ranges you're looking at for these devices. Okay. All right. Now, um, if you want more information, you know, contact us again. If you want information on the software, so I think a lot of people joined up on this webinar to get information on the software itself. Uh, we didn't cover that off. Go and, and uh, look at uh, upcoming webinars. We do have weekly webinars on this stuff or just go and watch one of these on-demand uh, videos that goes through and, and does you know, pretty comprehensive demos of all the software. Uh, and again, go to uh, the shop to get that full listing. I always put the knowledge base here because if you want information on the software, like let's say you installed WMS Express, the free one, and you wanna know how to set it up and use it, you can go to the knowledge base and that's got all the documentation on the products. Uh, if you follow us on YouTube and, and any of the social media stuff, you'll get updated. Uh, videos on, uh, you know, all of these products, new features, all of that kind of good stuff. Uh, if you do have any additional questions, feel free to let us know. We'll do our best to answer them. And again, contact us if you need any specific pricing on anything, whether it's for Business Central or SAP or whatever else. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time. Hopefully, we'll be talking again soon.
Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content. Oh, 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 o